The reason iMovie doesn't have audio meters is the application is designed to keep it simple and easy to use. In this video, I'll show you how to edit iMovie without the need for audio meters and how to automatically level that audio and even tweak it a little if you wish. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to add audio meters if you still feel you need them. And we'll also review what you've learned in this video. I'm Bruce McBride, and my goal is to improve your knowledge in iMovie and to speed up your workflow. In the description below, you will find timestamps that will jump you to different parts of this video. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and press the bell. You'll see how to normalize audio to a good level, and you'll use the same feature to be able to normalize a number of clips so that they're all at the same audio level. iMovie lets you automatically adjust the level of audio. I'm going to show you how to do this and how to prove the difference. This clip has no adjustments on it. Let's just play it. Those by going back here and remove fades, and there is shortcut. If we come up here and we select the audio and then select auto adjustment, and then play the clip. Those by going back here and you can clearly so hear the difference there. Here and you'll know. What I'd like to do now is to prove the difference that iMovie has made with that. So we're going to take the non-normalized version of the clip. So we turn the auto off and we're going to export that as a file and we'll export it as audio only. And now I'm going to export a normalized file so we can compare the difference. So we'll select auto for that file and export that as a normalized file using the same process here, export and selecting audio only. So I've got the two versions in Audacity, the non-normalized one and the normalized one. So this one's been automatically treated by iMovie, and then this one is the original. So let's play this one first. Remove those by going back here and remove fades, and there are shortcuts here, and you'll notice. And what we can see here is the peaks are well below the minus 12 level. What I'd like to do is to see them in here somewhere. So now let's look at the normalized version and play that. Remove those by going back here and remove fades, and there are shortcuts here, and you'll notice. And you can see here that the peaks are just over the 12 and under the 6. So this, this is much better for YouTube, this version. Now we're back in iMovie. I've split that clip into two portions, and I've also added a voiceover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the audio in the second portion of the clip and also reduce the audio and the voiceover. So if we select the three clips now and come to the audio volume level, and you can see that we can adjust this to auto and, and nothing's changed here, but as we move the slider, you can see that the three different levels are all coming up to the same level. So if we play this through now. Play then and the fire. You need to select the clip slightly differently for the crop. So you can see that both of those now are at the same level. And if we play this one here, in this video, I'll show you the differences you can make in iMovie with you. So that's at the same level as well. We can do a similar thing to this if I reduce the level of this clip entirely now and take a copy of this one here, that's Command C, and then select this clip and come up to edit you can see we can paste adjustments and we can paste the volume adjustment there. Now also notice in the paste adjustments, you can also paste all of the changes of that first clip to the second one, or you can individually paste the different settings as they are here. And incidentally, you can also mute this clip you could drag the audio levels down, or you could come up here and select the audio meter and simply mute it. And that mutes it entirely. You can come back to this now and the audio levels are back again. 
And you'll also notice up here, there's lower volume of other clips selected. If I bring in a music track and put that below the voiceover, I think you might notice that the music is far too loud. Of course, we can reduce that music by lowering the level here. But there's a much easier way to do this if we select the clip above and then come to the audio level here, you can lower the volume of the other clip. And you can see now how that volume's significantly gone down. And then you come to audio fades and so And if you want to, you can change the amount of lowering there. Another thing you can do with audio is you can adjust the audio within a clip. Now there are two ways to do this. You could hold the option key down and as you click on the audio volume line there, you can see white dots appearing. Now to change the audio level from here to here, that's in other words, reduce this or increase it, you'll need four dots. Once you put those dots in there, then you can select the line between and lower that volume level you'll have a dot here that starts the change, a dot that completes the change to the lower level, and then another dot that starts the change back to the original level. These keyframes, as they're known as, can be moved independently. So you could move that one independently. You can increase the length of the, of the fade. You can decrease the amount of time that it's lowered. There is another way of doing the same thing, and this is by holding the R key and selecting a range. So holding the R key down, you'll see that the cursor has changed to a different icon. And now when we drag this through here, that range is selected. So we can change the length of the range there either side. And once you have a range, then you can decrease or increase your volume levels, and you can also change the fade positions of these keyframes. So what the range is doing is adding those keyframes in for you rather than using the option key as we did in this version. And to add another effect here, we can select the clip and then come to these three bubbles here, and you can see you can change the audio effects here. So once we've selected that, if you come over here now, works in two ways. First of all, so we have an echo effect, or we could have a robot the effect. The crossfade works. You need to select a cosmic clip slightly And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can add audio meters to iMovie as a third-party option from an organisation called Pro Level. And there's a good video on how to do this from Michael Kinney. I put a link in the description below so you can go directly to that. So what have we learned? iMovie is designed to be easy and so specialised knowledge about audio meters is not required, unless you really want to, of course, and then you can add your own, as I mentioned before. Secondly, you have an ability to automatically change levels and you can tweak those. And finally, if you do feel you need to add audio meters, go to the App Store. Pro Level is available there as an application. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and press the bell. There are new videos every Sunday.